This is the second in the series on the Forbes Quick Neurological Examination. A video of this examination can be located on YouTube or at neurologyfeeds.com. In this short presentation, I want to show how you can use this examination as a core examination to which you can bolt on additional pieces that you think are relevant in order to make a rapid, um, focused and intelligent assessment of your patient. I really want to try and move people away from using comprehensive neurological examinations. They generally do not add to diagnosis, they generally are an inconvenience, they are time consuming and you want to be spending time just thinking intelligently about what's wrong with your patients rather than doing routine tasks unthinkingly. Just to remind you, I'm a practicing consultant neurologist. The Forbes Quick Neurological Examination is a seven step examination. And just to run over it briefly, the patient is observed walking into your consulting room. You listen to their history, which then assesses their language as they talk. You then do a structured examination, which is done with the patient seated in a chair with their socks and shoes off. You assess vision with a Snellen chart. You check visual fields. You check eye movements and, and look, in the, look in the optic disc for papilledema. You measure the strength of eye closure and lip closure. You then go on and check for upper limb drift, finger nose ataxia, and shoulder abduction strength. There's no need to do reflexes in the quick examination of the upper limb. In the lower limb you check hip flexion strength, knee extension strength, the ankle jerk, and the plantar responses. Those six initial parts will actually screen the patient effectively for major neurological disease. The anything else components, however, is where your intelligence and wit kick in. And I'll give you some illustrations. So for example, if you've got a patient presenting with acute headache, in addition to the Forbes Quick Neurological Examination, you might want to check for meningism or have a careful look around the eye for a Horner syndrome, for, for, for example. Or in someone with tremor, you might want to specifically try and elicit extra pyramidal signs like slowing of movements, rigidity, their ability to copy a diagram. In some with a numb hand, where obviously carpal tunnel would be a common cause, you might want to map out sensation at the junction of the median and ulnar sensory territories in the ring finger. Or a person who's fainted or had syncope, you're going to listen to the heart sounds or check blood pressure lying or standing. You can see there are many, many little scenarios where you can use the Forbes Quick Neurological Examination as a core examination and then go on and do a more targeted exam. This frees up your time. It means you're using time efficiently, effectively, and taking then better time to think about what actually is the most sensible um, way to manage your own patients. So how to be smart with the Forbes Quick Neurological Examination is to learn it and use the examination in common neurological scenarios. After the screening examination, add in anything else that you think is relevant and that might alter your management. Commit yourself to a diagnosis or differential diagnosis for your patient and then manage them appropriately. The video for the, the quick neurological examination can be found at YouTube or on neurologyfeeds.com. Thank you for listening. Create your very own video podcast from PowerPoint. Log on to authorstream.com. It's absolutely free.